the reading from the Bible today, it's just the first two verses from um, Ephesians, as I put them on the screen. Again, it's Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, which reads, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so let's stand up again and sing another song. Um, so let's think about uh, these two verses we just read. And um, as always, uh, let me just go back to my notes. So again, the message is called Faithful Saints in Christ Jesus. Um, and before we begin, let's pray. Father God, we thank you again um, for Ephesians. We thank you for this letter. We thank you so much for the so many amazing, clear ideas you put in here. Father, the church with different denominations, different thoughts, struggle with Ephesians, especially the first two chapters. Yet, Father, we know it's not your word that is difficult, but it's the heart of heart of man that is hard. So we pray, Father, you soften our hearts. And your spirit, Father, we pray that he will teach us amazing things. And, Father, we pray that you, through your spirit, you continue to build on that foundation that you have established on Christ Jesus. And we pray, Father, that we, as we read and meditate through Ephesians in the next few weeks, according to your will and plan, Father, we pray that your love to us will be even more magnificently, Father, visible. And for us, Father, to react in that same way, to love you and to love each other. So help us, Father, to think about these few verses in the way that brings glory and honor to your name, that encourages the church to trust you no matter what. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So as an introduction, so this letter to the Ephesians is about the church. And it's a letter to the church. It's about the church, and it's a letter to the church. It's about how God has united all believers, all believing people, Jews and Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles in the body of Christ. It clearly shows how God has done everything necessary to bring us all to himself through Christ Jesus. It is divided into two sections. Chapters 1 to 3 are about how God brought, brought the reconciliation between humanity and himself through his son, Jesus. Again, chapters 1 to 3 show how God fixed the relationship that was broken by our sins, is broken by our sins beyond repair. These chapters show the motivation behind why God did all of this. It shows that God's motivation for saving sinners and reconciling us to himself is in love in love god our father brought unity between all people god did all of this by his love grace and mercy through the gift of faith faith in his son jesus ephesians 2a says for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. In chapters 4 to 6, then describe the consequences of this transformation that God did in us. Again, in chapters 1 to 3, we see what God did. He says, but because of his great love, great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Being made alive in Christ, Jesus produces a character in us that reflects this amazing transformation which God brings about in our lives as he adopts us into the citizenship of Israel. In Ephesians, the mystery is revealed. This mystery that brought so much persecution on the Apostle Paul. The mystery that the Gentiles, who are us, people 
who are not just Jews, are now part of the people of God, the spiritual Israel, the holy people of God, and the body of Christ. In Ephesians 2.12 it says, Remember that at, at that time, you, the Gentiles, that's us, were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. So when was this letter written? Paul sent, spent some time in Ephesus during his second mission trip. You can read that in Acts. He established and trained many in the church. Paul wrote this letter while in prison in Rome, as you can see in the timeline slide. So Ephesians is an epistle from prison. And beside Ephesians, Paul also wrote Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, while in prison in Rome. So these are what were the prison epistles. So what type of writing is it? Well, it is an epistle, which means simply a letter. It is didactical, which means it's a letter that has teaching that are directed to the entire church. Okay, so for today, I've got a sermon question for you. And the question is this. What makes us Christians? And this is not an oversimplification of what Christianity is. It is the root of what really makes us Christians. As we will see in Ephesians, Christians are the body of Christ and explains clearly and concisely how we became the body of Christ. Now, to help us answer this the sermon question, I have the following three points from these two verses, three points from two verses. By God's will, we are in Christ to have peace with God. So the three points are, by God's will, we are in Christ to have peace with God. So let's have a look at the first point. By God's will. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. This whole letter is from God. Everything that Paul taught in this letter was, was by the will of God. Everything you will learn from this epistle is the will of God for his children. Nothing Paul said in this letter came from himself. It is all from God to the church. The will of God is accomplished through his son, Jesus Christ. Remember, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The will of God, the will of God, lived for us and died for us and was raised for us, and he lives for us. The Apostle Paul was called by God's will to represent his Lord and God, Jesus Christ, as a messenger boy to the church. The challenge is when you read this letter, it sounds unbelievable. This letter is so encouraging that when you read it or study it, you can be forgiving for thinking that it's impossible to see how this could be true. How can a perfect God love a sinner like me? You'll be astounded at the unimaginable love of God. God, in love, has done all things necessary to bring us, us, the Gentiles and the Jews, into unity as one spiritual and physical community in Christ, as members of his body. So everything you will learn is by his will, and his will is to place us all, Jews and Gentiles, in Christ. And that takes me to the second point, we are in Christ. It says in Ephesians 1, 1 again, the second part of it, it says, to the faithful saints in Christ Jesus 
at Ephesus. This letter was written initially to the believers in Ephesus. And its twin letter, it has a twin letter, is the letter to the Colossians. Colossians is about the head of the body or the church, which is Jesus. Both letters define holistically who, is the, who the church is. In Ephesians, the church is the body of Christ. And in Colossians, the church is under his headship. But in Ephesians, we see how sinners like us, spiritually dead people, absolutely hopeless people, and in no way capable of pleasing God, we see in it how God turns us into faithful saints in Christ. So the Greek literally says this. It says to the holy ones, saints, who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul is not describing two groups of people, those who are saints or holy, and those who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul is using two adjectives, saints and faithful, to describe those who are in Christ Jesus. The word for saints is the same word for holy, which in its simplest terms means set apart, set aside. The word faithful, which is also used as an adjective to describe those who are in Christ Jesus, describe their attitude toward Christ, God, the Father, and each other. Now you might be asking, how can we be holy and faithful in Christ Jesus? I mean, let's be honest and say and confess that we are nowhere near anything like that, being holy and saintful. Yet the fact we ask that question, the fact we ask that question declares God's work in us. And this is exactly what we will learn, Lord willing, as we will go through chapters one to three of this letter. We will see clearly and magnificently how God turns us from dead sinners to be alive in Christ. And not just that, but also how God keeps us holy and faithful in Christ. And this is all done so that we can get to have peace with God. The opening of this letter is a typical format used normally by Paul and other Christians. It says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The reality is that this greeting is a great, is a great statement in of itself. If it's not true, if this statement is not true, as in if we don't have God's grace, which brings us peace with him, then there is a great blasphemy against God and a great false presumption. However, this letter would clearly articulate God, God's exact will to bring us into right relationship with himself by his grace. And grace means God's richness at Christ's expense. God's will, which Paul explains in this letter, demonstrates this amazing grace we received through Christ Jesus to give us peace with God. So what? Hang in there. I really ask you to hang in there and enjoy learning about God's perfect love toward his people as we learn how, by God's will, we are in Christ to have peace with God. So in summary, it is by God's will and grace that we are set aside in Christ to be holy and faithful so we can have peace with God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the brief introductions to Ephesians. We thank you, Father, for the clarity that by your will, you declared the church in Ephesus to be right with you by calling them saints 
and also, Father, pronouncing them faithful in Christ. Help us, Father, to understand through Ephesians, as we go through it, how you have enabled your people to be, Father, saints and faithful in Christ Jesus. May you, Father, demonstrate clearly to us how by your love and grace and mercy you've done all of these things. And, Father, through your Spirit, the Spirit you sealed, you sealed us with, help us to remember these things every day. So help us, Father, to go through it together with you and to grow in loving you every day. And we'll pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's see if the next song will work. I hope so. Amen. Let's finish with these words from um, Ephesians chapter 3. This is Paul praying to the church. He goes, I pray that he, this God, may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what it is, what is the length and width, height and depth of God's love, and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Go to love and peace.